Hello there. We are excited to have the opportunity to speak with entrepreneur and Dayton, Ohio native Larry Connor at the International Space Station. He is the pilot on the historic AX-1 mission that launched April 8th. And this is the first ever private astronaut mission to the ISS. Larry, you look amazing. You are smiling. How are you doing today? Yeah, no, we're uh, doing great. The whole crew's doing great, and I'm happy to be with you today. Larry, tell me, what has surprised you most about the trip so far? What has surprised me the most? Well, probably everything from uh, the launch, getting into orbit, coming over the hatch. You know, you can't prepare yourself. Okay, we apologize. Looks like we have a slight loss of signal with the ISS. This is normal, as we know, since it is orbiting. Um, about 20 seconds, we're gonna hopefully check back in with Larry once again on board the ISS. But if you've been following, this has been a long journey for Larry and three other crew members who have been training for months, really more than a year now, I think, to prepare for this historic mission with Axiom Space. Larry, it looks like you are back with us. Uh, I sure am. We had what's called an LOS, loss of signal. Okay, Larry, let's talk about that moment that you reached that outer limit. I heard you speak briefly um, when you uh, came through the hatch. You said it was literally out of this world. Yeah, so all the experiences have literally been out of this world, from the launch to getting into orbit to cross what they call crossing the hatch, coming into the ISS, going through the ISS, being able to uh, float like this. <laughs> you know, so all of these things are, you know, pretty surreal. Uh, and... Uh, just the whole experience looking out of the window that they call the uh, cupola and a view of the uh, earth, which were some 250 miles above. But they've all been great. Larry, if you can, talk about uh, some of the challenges um, that maybe you did not expect given the extensive training you and the crew underwent. Yeah, I'm not sure there were any challenges we didn't expect, but we knew there'd be big challenges, big challenges in just uh, adapting to the environment, big challenges with trying to conduct all the research we're doing. We have over 100 hours of research uh, spanning some 25 different uh, experiments. So once we got here Saturday, we have been on the go. We've basically been working uh, 14 hours a day. So I find it interesting when people talk about space tourists, we couldn't be farther from that. You know, space tourist goes up for maybe five or 10 minutes. We're literally working nonstop for 14 hours a day. And the other couple hours are spent uh, getting me meals and uh, preparing ourselves to go to sleep. And you talked about those clinical trials that we know you're doing, Larry, for the Mayo Clinic the Cleveland Clinic focusing on aging and cancer cells and so much more. Now that you're actually there, how does it feel to know that you do have a hand in the future of science and medicine? Yeah, well, uh, I don't think it's about me. I think it's about we, and I think everybody needs to uh, work together, whether it's in the United States or around the world. And so we're just really happy, honored, and thrilled to be doing two experiments with Mayo Clinic and two experiments with uh, Cleveland Clinic. And hopefully, there's no guarantees, but hopefully it leads to groundbreaking uh, research. And if you can just talk about that a little bit more, Larry, because basically the research that can be done in microgravity, you know, really is difficult to replicate here on Earth. So just talk a little bit about that, especially when it comes to maybe even, you know, the aging cells in our bodies. Yeah, so I did not realize, in fact, I was having this conversation with the NASA crew that are up here, by the way, Crew 3, who have been unbelievably helpful and supportive. 
that if you think about it, there's very, very few fights yet between government institutions like Mayo and Cleveland, there's a tremendous need for doing research in microgravity. And so uh, the senescent cells are just one example of a unique environment. I spent five hours in what's called the life science glove box, uh, transferring senescent cells that we brought up uh, from the ground uh, to incubators up there, and then a future mission will uh, bring them back down to study the effect in uh, microgravity. Uh, It is certainly groundbreaking, Larry, and exciting just to know that this work is being done and the fact that someone from Ohio has a hand in this. You know, like you said, you signed up for this to advance space exploration and invigorate new generations into space research. Now that you're actually there, what more do you want to add, if anything, to this mission? Well, I'm just proud to be from Ohio and from the uh, Dayton area. And obviously, Ohio has a rich history of astronauts. Let's be clear, though. I don't put myself in the category of a John Glenn or Neil Armstrong. They were really, truly pioneers. So again, as I said earlier, it's really not about me. It's about what we can all uh, collectively do in the end to help not only Americans, but uh, people worldwide. Larry, I know we have only a few minutes left here with you. You spoke with some students earlier today from Dayton, Ohio. What was that conversation like for you from both a professional standpoint now as an astronaut, but also from a personal point? Sure. So the message that I was trying to convey to them is have belief in yourself, aim high, believe, pay no attention to any doubters. Impossible is only impossible if you think it's impossible. And ultimately in any endeavor, if you have dedication, perseverance and hard work, your chances for success are good. What a great message. Larry, and I think you've shown all of us that you have aimed high and you are there. Thank you for your time. We look forward to your safe return home. And um, yes, great to see you there at the International Space Station, Larry. Yeah, thanks for the time and uh, go Buckeyes.